Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Let's go over the next part of this February update. The firmware team here in San Diego continues to test and validate our production intent battery management system. For those who don't know, this is one of the most important systems running in a vehicle. It ensures the battery pack is operating in the perfect conditions and puts the battery in a safe state if any catastrophic issues should arise during operation. In March, we're excited to share more about what a battery management system is and what makes our special in a full video. Only 30%. Okay, so they're talking about they have their own BMS. So, you know, here is the Aptera logo on the circuit board of their BMS. I'm not super familiar with it, so I can't identify what these chips are. Um, these look like capacitors to me. Um, but the function of a BMS, for those of you guys that um, don't know, is there's three main functions. There's battery protection, battery monitoring, and battery optimization. And so what it does is it, it wants to make sure that the battery pack stays within its operating parameters, both in terms of voltage, current, and um, temperature. So it has temperature sensors. So if it's like going, getting too hot or too cold, um, it will change, it'll adjust the amount of coolant and adjust power output and charging state to keep it within the um, operating temperature range. And then also batteries, each battery has a voltage range. Each individual cell has a voltage range it has to stay in. If, it, if you charge it beyond that voltage range, it can explode. Um, if you charge it um, below, that'll damage, you know, if you discharge it below its minimum voltage, then you can lose um, some life of that cell. And then it every cell has a maximum discharge and charge rate. And so the amount of current that it can output has to be monitored as well. So the, the BMS is doing all of that. It also monitors the state of charge. So like what the state of charge of each individual cell is, how much current and voltage has been um, has been charged or discharged from it and how many cycles it's gone through. It just keeps track of all that and the temperature It monitors all those things. And then optimization, basically um, all the individual cells. So like, you know, if we, if you look back at Aptera's battery pack, um, you know, it's made up of thousands of cells and each of these cells are manufactured to be very, very close to each other. And in a perfect world, each cell would be completely identical and have identical charge and discharge rates. Um, but because we live in the real world, every cell is a little bit different and some of them are gonna charge and discharge a little faster or slower than the others. And if that happens, one cell could drain much faster than the other or charge much faster than the other. And that would be dangerous because that, that cell would be out of balance with the rest. So the BMS makes sure that all the cells are balanced. So that, that's basically the job of the BMS. And then let's see, he's talking about um, subscriptions. And it looks like in March, they're gonna do a more up to in-depth video about the BMS. So we'll definitely be on the lookout for that. Be sure to subscribe below and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss exciting updates to come. At CPC in Italy, they're working on assembling the first three body structures. Chat Okay, so um, I think some people interpreted this as saying that they're only going to make three uh, production intent vehicles when they said 16 before. Um, my impression is they're still making 16. They're just currently working on the first batch of three at this point. So what this tells us is CPC has not finished uh, building the, the bodies yet. So there's no way they can be in uh, Carlsbad right now. Some people have noted that there is this um, large uh, wooden crate in some pictures, recent pictures that we've seen from Aptera. And they think those crates represent a shipped production intent body in Carlsbad. That is absolutely not the case. They're still over in Italy. They have not been built and they haven't even been shipped over yet. Assay and suspension components. Remember, these are production bodies. They're using low volume assembly jigs to assemble all the pieces together but we will be able to assemble the entire bank fully automatically with robots when we choose to transition to high volume manufacturing. Okay, so they are hand building those with jigs. And I think that's what they're working on right now. But their plan is to have it so that these can be assembled using robots and like almost fully auto automated uh, once they get the capital to move to high volume production. 
Now, I plan to visit CPC next month and bring you along so that we can take a look at the progress being made together. We're excited to unveil Aptera's Bink to the public for the first time at JEC World in Paris, France, the leading international composite show from March 5th to the 7th. Come meet with the team that created Aptera's Tooling, Energy, and... Okay, so this is the video that we had yesterday, and it's talking about um, uh, how the Bink is going to be on display at this um, tr kind of a trade convention. Uh, it's for the composites industry. Now, this energy, they're the people that make this press. And so CPC buys this press from energy. Um, and then they're the ones that are going to be at the booth. And if you look at their little, um, their promo for their booth, this right here is, this right here, this is the Aptera. These, these are the A pillars. And this is the windshield area. So that is the carbon fiber SMC part of that front part. Um, and here's like the hood area. And so um, uh, Jason texted me and let me know that I missed that. And now that he points it out, it's very clear that um, that is the A pillar and the front end of the Aptera in their thing. So that's gonna be on display. It will not be an assembled um, body in carbon. Um, in case people were wondering what bank means, it, it's like that, it's Aptera shorthand for body and carbon. It's kind of a throwback to the old automotive term, body and white. Body and white is an assembled metal body. And it's, it's after they like put it in that primer thing before they put it through the paint shop. And so it's basically white. So they call it body and white. What well, they're calling Aptera's body, bank, body and carbon. And anyway, so it's going to be an exploded view there. So it won't be an assembled but it should be very interesting. I'm hoping that um, uh, some one of our viewers can go get footage for us. Aptera's gonna get their own footage, but it's always nice to get like kind of like community footage. And um, one person has emailed me, so I'm gonna try to get him a press pass, and hopefully we'll get some um, um, some footage, extra footage from that, and some maybe some detailed shots. That'll be pretty interesting, I think. And Aptera's marketing team members, Audra and Chris. Finally, as you know. Aptera is designed to be a very safe vehicle, but we haven't yet shared results from our years of engineering. I thought this month we could show a teaser of Aptera's crash simulations. As you see, we have a... Okay, this is actually pretty cool. I think we've seen some of these crash simulations before, but you can see that this is the, the chassis. Um, this is the frame, um, and the, 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 um, the battery pack sits in this frame here. This little frame, and it looks like it's designed so that when you have a frontal impact, it displaces the force of the impact downward and it folds at this point, which is kind of cool. Big front crumple zone protecting occupants. So right there, you see it folding like this. And so instead of pushing the force through the passenger cabin, it drives it downward and the front piece folds upward. And this, this folds um, right here at this point. So it protects this, uh, passenger compartment which is kind of cool from intrusions even on yeah, you see that so the passenger compartment there's no intrusion in here and the the energy of the crash is dissipated by the by the deformation of the um of the frame downward side impact our structural battery pack and re and so you see here this is the um the frame protects the passenger cabin and here's the structural battery pack you see one two three four five six here's the, the six uh, modules that go into the battery pack and um, I think this represents like the steel beam in the door reinforced door but anyway there looks like they've designed it so that intrusion into the passenger cabinet is uh, very low um, there is not as much um, crumple zone in a side impact to absorb the um, the energy of the imp of the collisions but that, i think that's the case in any car like in any car there's just less uh crumple zone on the side and um, you just you're gonna have to deal with the um uh, the forces that are that are put on the person but you're not gonna have intrusion into the passenger compartment it looks like which is very important because intrusion into the passenger compartment is obviously pretty bad um so this is their simulation and simulations are very good these days but um, of course, it's not as good as like real world crash test simulations, which they are planning to do with some of the PI builds. Takes the brunt of impact. We can't wait to compare these simulations to real life in our production intent vehicle builds. Okay, great. 
So we'll cover the rest of it um, later. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Um, any comments below? Um, there is a chance that uh, I may be able to talk to the CEOs of uh, Aptera. So if there's some questions that you would really like to ask, put them in the comments below, and I'll try to see if um, we have time to um, ask those questions. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone.